What's going on guys? Welcome to Blake's Garage. So what we are going to be doing today is installing the Cadillac brake swap. It's um, from ctsvswap.com. Uh, that's where you can get the brackets for doing this. And then all the rest of the information I have below with uh, Amazon links where you can purchase those. If you purchase those through my links, it really helps out the channel. So please do that if you are going to purchase any of these parts. Um, so let's get down to it. I will show you what stuff you're going to need and we'll kind of just go over it real quick. If you want a more detailed video of what all goes into this kit, um, check out my unboxing video for this. I'll put like a little eye up here, right here. That is what the stock brakes look like guys. That is what the stock ones are looking like. So this is pretty much everything that I used. Um, to do the installation on the driver's side. So this is all the stuff that you're gonna need So I got a breaker bar with a 17 mil on it That is for taking off my extended lugs if you have the stock lug nuts You're just gonna need a 19 mil. I have a brake style, you know open-ended flange 11 millimeter you're gonna need that I also used a 17 millimeter. I used a 10 millimeter a 12 millimeter then I used a couple of sockets as well. I used the 18, 19, 12. Um, you're also going to want to have a pair of gloves. That will come in handy just for uh, trying to get your hands not as dirty. They're still going to get dirty, but, you know, keeping the brake fluid off and whatnot. You're going to need a tap. Actually, the tap is going to come with the CTSV kit. So you're going to get the appropriate tap. This is what the kit looks like here. Uh, that's the mounting bracket. It's going to come with three bolts and the tap and then you're going to obviously need the tap piece you know the adapter so you can drive that and tap it on home i would recommend having some arp extended lug nuts as you are going to have a spacer piece in between the rotor that spacer piece looks like this so when you put that in it's going to go this direction behind the rotor and that's gonna space out the rotor just a little bit. So it's actually gonna kick out your wheel quite a little bit too. Just, you know, that exact amount. Brake cleaner can't help. I used some PB blaster just for uh, when I was tapping the holes, uh, just to lubricate the tap. You're gonna need the brake fluid, the ATS calipers, Cadillac. I painted these and I also added a Brimbo sticker to them. So I think they look pretty sweet right now. I'm probably gonna change this up to a white sticker. Uh, this white stickers that I ordered were like super small and my buddy Kevin gave me these green ones. Um, they look cool, but I may just go with white here soon. These are the 2004 STI rotors. These are what you're gonna need because these are five by 100. If you have a 2015 uh, you're going to have 5 pi 114.3 and you can just use regular STI rotors. You can go with drilled or slotted if you want to. Um, I just did not. So what I went with, which was probably one of the actually most expensive parts on the whole kit besides the brackets, uh, I went with the Carbotech uh, XP8s. These are race brake pads, so went with those. Then you are going to need the hardware right up here. So that's the little piece that you know pushes on it and then you comes with the pins these are about 15 bucks um, and then obviously that caliper which I already stated but it's pretty awesome these are only $80 a piece guys so check out that link below um, if it says that they're out of stock they restock like in a matter of a week um, they're usually back pretty quick I think if they order they get about like 15 in at a time they sell out pretty quickly, but if you purchase them, you'll be on the back order and you'll get them most likely like within a week. I didn't have any issues when I ordered mine, they were back ordered too. Um, you're gonna need a drill bit. This is one of the important things you're gonna need. This is a 9 16 drill bit. This is not in most drill bit kits. So unfortunately, you're probably gonna have to go to the hardware store and pick one of those up. I think I spent like 18 bucks on this. Uh, I'll put a link on the Amazon. I'll probably be able to get a lot cheaper than that. That was pretty damn expensive, if you, <laughs> from what I think. I also went with stainless steel braided uh, brake lines. So that's the part number. These are just the stop tech ones. Um, I went with the fronts and the rears. For right now, we're just going to do the fronts. 
Oh yeah, also guys, we are almost up to 10,000 subscribers. Right now I think I'm about 100 subscribers off. So if you can, go ahead and share this video because I know this should be pretty popular with most of the Subaru guys to do this swap. And I'm sure a lot of people will be interested. Also, it just released the new t-shirts for uh, Blake's Garage. So if you want to support the channel, here is like the other one. So I had that wrench on one on the other day on the, the uh, lug nut installation video. So this one says Blake's Garage. It's got a turbo, a little bearded snail dude coming out of it with the uh, with the pink donut and he's got some beard crumbs in there so it's pretty cool so if you guys like that one uh, go ahead and check out the website it's blakesgarage.bigcartel.com I'll have a link below on that as well um, it really helps out the channel a lot if you guys purchase a t-shirt so please help out the channel and we'll see more installation videos coming uh, if we do that if we could sell like a hundred shirts I'm sure I'll probably try to do a coilover installation video that would be pretty nice because um, I know I would love to get that done and start getting the suspension really dialed in. So that'd be really cool. So let's go ahead and rip off this wheel. Once you have your wheel off, then you are gonna wanna remove the brakes. So you're gonna wanna remove this bolt right here. This is on the bottom. And then you're gonna wanna remove this one right up here, which is on the top. That's gonna allow you to remove the whole caliper assembly and then you'll be able to place it up here on your A-arm. Go ahead and grab a 17 millimeter wrench and then you can go ahead and break those bolts loose on the backside. If your bolts are on there tight, a little BFH action will help you out. Just kind of whack that, break some loose. Okay, once you loosen that up at the bottom, you can go ahead and take that bolt out. We are not gonna use these bolts anymore. So these are basically you just toss away or just put them in your old calipers. You may be able to sell your old calipers on Craigslist or something. I don't know if there's a demand for them, but you know, maybe, who knows. Move that top bolt. So once you have both those bolts off, you're gonna be able to remove the caliper. So this is just gonna pull right off of there. After we pull it off, I just like to set it on the A-arm for now. And then we'll loosen up the rest of the bolts after we get the all the new stuff installed and we'll disconnect that line last that way we have less brake fluid dripping out all right also guys make sure when you take your brakes off that you haven't been driving the car recently if you have these are going to be super hot and they'll melt your fingers off so nobody wants that but these are just floating rotors so all you have to do is just take grab it from the middle you should just be able to remove the rotor place that aside we're not gonna be needing those anymore. Look at those nice extended lugs. If you guys want to see the installation video of these extended lug nuts, I'll uh, put a link. There'll be like a little link right up here. You see it, you see it? Click that if you wanna know how to do the installation on these ARP extended lugs. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and remove this heat shield. Since I don't wanna remove like any additional stuff, I don't wanna mess with any wheel bearings or anything like that, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it out with these snips. Um, so, you know, if you want to keep this, you might want to do some additional stuff to, uh, to keep this. You can also cut around the new calipers and keep the old shields, but I'm not really worried about it. I feel like rocks always get caught in here and it's a real pain in the ass. Um, so I'm just going to take these off and not really run them anymore. So right now I'm just loosening up the four bolts back here. You will see the studs kind of popping through. I can't really get that great of an angle back there, but you know, you just break these loose. You'll be able to see them pretty well when you're back here. So we're gonna loosen all four of these up so that we can like kind of spin this bracket right here. Um, that way when we're cutting it, it makes it just easier to manipulate. I actually used a screwdriver last time to use it kind of like as a shear as well. So, I mean, like I said, you can actually take this apart a little bit differently um, if you like want to replace the wheel bearings, but I don't plan on doing that. So if you do it this way, you're gonna save a bit of money if you wanted to replace a wheel bearing or something like that then you know do that okay so once you go ahead and loosen all those bolts up then you'll see you'll be able to spin this heat shield um, what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna try to pull out the axle as much as I can to get like as much space without like I said removing everything Then I'm gonna come in here with my snips and I'm gonna start cutting to where I can get this out of here so with a bit of persuasion with a flathead screwdriver and a BFH, I was able to kind of just take it in here, bang, 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 just kind of chisel this shield in half so that I can bend it out. Let's go ahead and pull this thing off right here. That's what I kind of just notched out, this big old chunk of, uh, of metal right here. That way I don't have to take any of this apart. Now we can go ahead, trash that thing, and uh, we can go ahead and tighten these 
all back up. Also, another good reason to take this out is you're actually gonna gain that clearance right there. So you're gonna suck the wheel back a little bit. That will help out with the spacer. So it'll actually take a little bit of that spacer backspacing out. So you'll, uh, you'll gain a little bit of that that so it'll push the wheel back in just a tad. Go ahead and grab our spacer. We're gonna wanna use that chamfered edge. You can see it like that, this side is flat. You're gonna wanna face that towards the hub. So basically just put it on there. You can see how these are drilled for the two different patterns. That's a five by 114.3 and five by 100. All right guys, so now we're gonna pull out that 916 drill bit and we're gonna drill out the top hole. What I'm gonna do first though, is I'm gonna spray, you know, if you guys have something, I'm just using some of this um, PB Blaster, you know, anything will help. Line up your drill, you wanna make sure that you have a nice clean shot. Um, and you can just start it out and start pouring out that hole. All right, so we got that all bored out. Now that we have that hole drilled out, we'll go ahead and clean this area up a little bit, just get the metal shavings out of the way. Now we're gonna move on to the bottom hole. Right here is the bottom hole for the original mounting bracket. We're gonna take the tap that's supplied with the CTS V-Swap kit, and we are gonna insert that. Now we're gonna start out slow, making sure that we have it nice and straight. Just go nice and slow, make sure it's centered up. Then we'll start cutting. Make sure to put some lubricant on there. That way you're not cutting dry. Now again, you may want to clean this out. So taking a little bit of brake cleaner, go ahead and clean those threads out. Uh, make sure you have eye protection on because you get this in your eyeballs, it's going to sting. One bolt that you're gonna have to remove before you can insert the bolts to mount the calipers on is this bottom part on the strut. This is not the eccentric bolt. This is not the camber bolt. The camber bolt is up here. This one's down here. So it's not gonna screw with your alignment at all, but you're gonna have to bust that one loose. So let's go ahead and install this bracket. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on there. The bottom bolt is actually gonna be the shortest one. And you're gonna have a total of three bolts here. Now they say that you do not have to tap this bottom hole if you don't want to. You can do a through bolt and get a little bit longer of a bolt here and put a nut on the end. But I like the tapping idea. Uh, that was really basic, really easy. So, you know, I think that you guys should tap it if you're gonna do this. So now we are to this point. We're gonna go ahead and grab the rotor itself. We're gonna throw that on. Make sure you have that spacer on there. Make sure you have that chamfered edge facing towards the hub and we can go ahead and put this on here. Um, not a bad idea to just grab like two lug nuts real quick. So once you go ahead and have that on, then you can go and take the brake caliper and put it on the car. Now we're just gonna slide this on here and we're gonna get it right into its area that it needs to be. Now we're gonna use those two longer bolts. They're gonna go into those two other bolts of the bracket. So it's the top and the middle hole. We're gonna go ahead and tighten those up, torque those down appropriately. Not a bad idea to put some thread lock on there if you have some. Some blue stuff I would recommend. Just gonna go ahead and tighten that down in there. Just finger tight for now. And then we'll torque it to the appropriate value. We'll take this one. These are both nine, actually all three of these are 19 millimeter bolts. So if you do not put in that hub spacer, the issue you are gonna run into is that your brake pads are not gonna be evenly spaced. One side would have more uh, brake pad and one side would have less, so the one side would grind. And that's why you gotta put those in there. That's how these were designed uh, when they built this bracket. Now, before we forget all about it, let's go ahead and put this bottom bolt back in once we have those tightened down. As you can see, this area right here is the area that interferes. So when you're putting this bolt in, you can't do that because this bolt is in the way. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install the steel braided brake line. Uh, right here you'll see this little nub right there, a little nipple thing. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and install the brake line. You'll grab the banjo fitting right here. You have these spacers, the little washers, the banjo washers, uh, one on each side. And we're just gonna go ahead and hand thread that on there making sure not to cross thread anything in the process. You don't want to just face this line up, kind of just like how the stock line was. This bolt right here, we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Um, I don't know what the hell size that is, so let me go grab the appropriate socket. 
So that is a 12 millimeter right there. Let's go ahead and install the new line here, just like that. Put it in and we'll install the new bolt. So these steel braided lines are gonna be a whole lot better because they don't flex or bulge like a traditional rubber hose would. This can kind of bubble and you can get, you know, some deflection in the brake pedal. So it'll actually like increase in diameter and inside diameter and you don't want that. With the steel braided line, it's a uh, Teflon coated and it's, you know, it's got a rubber hose on the inside, but the steel braid makes it to where it can't expand. You can use your 10 millimeter open-ended brake wrench to go ahead and loosen up this brake line. So we're just gonna put it over there, try to just bust this loose real quick. Okay, once we have it a little bit loose, then I'm going to take, well, it's gonna start to leak a bit. So as soon as I can, I'm gonna remove that retaining clip. That way I can get this stuff all out of here once it's loosened up. So let's remove that. Try to feed this in as quick as possible. That way, like I said, we lose the least amount of fluid that we can. Not really about the fluid really getting lost. It's more so just about making a mess. So I'm just gonna leave this on here, this little towel. You're gonna wanna make sure that the nut is lined up correctly. You may have to loosen it up if you put a little bit too much torque on that already. That way you can move the stock line into place and insert the clip. It's gonna go flat side up. Hopefully you guys can see this. If not, you should be able to figure it out. Boom, boom, boom. That's on there. Now we can go ahead and tighten up that fitting. Awesome. Make sure it's nice and slug. These are flared fittings at the end, so you don't want them to leak. Brake leaks are bad, obviously. That feels good there. Now this stuff is super corrosive, so clean it off if you can. I'm just gonna use a little bit of brake cleaner, uh, which is also probably pretty corrosive, but just kinda get that off of whatever you got it on, because it could cause that to rust. All right guys, so now it's time to put in the brake pads. So I have the Carbatec XP8. These are race pads, so uh, I'm not sure how much, uh, if these are gonna squeal or whatever, but you do, like they say, requires the bedding portion. So you do need to bed these pads correctly after you use them, so, or after you install them. The instructions are in the box. I'm gonna try to do a video on that as well, but we're gonna go ahead and put the pads in now. Um, I like to use a little bit of brake grease on the back side of the pads. Basically any of the moving components back here uh, where there's a possibility for it to squeak. Um, you know, if it can squeak, if I can add a little bit of this and it might not have as many squeaks down the line. So once you have that, go ahead and insert the pads. Okay, so I've dropped those in. Now what we gotta do is put the retaining pins in the back and also, ah! Also this little piece on top. So make sure you get all the crap that you just dropped in there out. You can go ahead and just insert the pin from the back here. I wanna line up the brake pads with those pin holes. Put this right over the top like this. There's a little bit of bend in it. Get that through the other brake pad there. And then we can do the bottom half also. This is the same way on the bottom. Got a big bend in it, that way, you know, it keeps the brake pads separated when you're uh, after a stop. And slid those pins all the way in, so I used a punch on the ends right here just to bang it in the rest of the way. That little guy right there, you need to see that kind of popping through. If you can kind of see those right there and right there. I wanna make sure that they're in there and they're not just gonna pop out. All right guys, now we're gonna go ahead and bleed the brakes. Once we're done bleeding the brakes, uh, we can go ahead and reinstall the wheel and go bed in these brakes. All right guys, so that is basically the whole installation. Uh, we're gonna get those 
brakes bled and we are going to put the wheels back on the car but uh, check out some other videos if you want to see how to bleed, bleed brakes thanks a lot for watching the video it really helps you guys watching the channel and sharing any of my videos so if you want to share this video with anyone please do also guys check out the new t-shirts if you want uh, this is the snail one Blake's garage with a donut beard it's pretty cool uh, kind of random, but if you guys have watched some of my unboxing videos, you'd kind of get it. Um, there's also a Just Launch It t-shirt and a Wrench On t-shirt. So hopefully you guys like one of those. And if you purchase one, it really helps out the channel again. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked on these. There will uh, be a review to come. There will be more on these for sure. So make sure to subscribe and we'll talk to you guys later. Wrench On guys.